Here at Wonderstruck, we're of the opinion that water rockets are surely one of humanity's greatest inventions. The only problem is all that pumping. It just tends to get you a bit sweaty, a bit hot, and on a summer's afternoon, you don't really want that, do you? So we've come up with an idea which will make water rockets just a little bit more relaxing. And it doesn't involve liquid nitrogen. Now, a water rocket works because what you're doing when you're pumping it up is you're compressing the air inside the bottle. So you're storing energy inside that air. And when you release the catch or, or however you launch your rocket, that air can expand and do work and push the water out the bottom of the bottle through the neck. Now, as that water shoots out the bottom, it produces a thrust to lift the bottle upwards because of Newton's third law of motion, motion conservation of momentum, all that kind of thing. Now, we were thinking, there's any number of ways that you could store that energy and release it in order to push the water out and uh, the easiest one for us would be to actually fill the bottle with a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen gas with some water in it obviously and then ignite the hydrogen and oxygen gas and the resulting explosion and expanding gas which is actually water vapor from that explosion should push the water out of the bottom of the bottle and no need for all that sweaty effort Okay, so we just have to mount the bottle on the launcher, it should be fairly simple. We just thread the igniter wires through the centre, pull them through like that, and they come up through this hole, and we just screw them down onto these terminals. A fuse in here is just a piece of uh, nichrome wire stretched between two thick copper wires. So the current should make it get really hot and burn through. That should be enough to actually ignite the gas. So let's see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. And five, four, three, two. One. Well, that wasn't too shabby. Right, but it doesn't really look like we can use that bottle again. Now, this is actually quite interesting because you can see that the top of the bottle here, which was filled with the gas mixture, is the, the, the part that's actually kind of melted. The bottom of the bottle here, which is where the water was, is still pretty much as it should be. The water's obviously kept it cool and it hasn't suffered from the effects of the heat. Now the other interesting thing is you might actually expect there was an explosion in this bottle, heat generated, that the bottle would swell. But it's done exactly the opposite. It appears to actually have shrunk. Now when you burn hydrogen and oxygen, you produce water vapour. Now, the water vapour is in a gas form, obviously, when it's first produced, and water vapour takes up about 2,000 times as much volume as water liquid. Now, what seems to have happened is the water vapour is produced, it pushes the water out the bottom, but probably even before all that water gets out the bottom, it starts to contract as it cools down and turns back into the liquid phase, and actually starts to collapse the bottle. Now, that means if all the water hasn't actually left the bottle at that point, once the pressure in here drops below atmospheric pressure, it starts to suck the water back in. So that's quite interesting, and it means that these rockets aren't actually as good as the ones you do produce with all that effort of pumping on a sweaty summer afternoon. So, yes, quite an interesting experiment. Okay, now just as we finished filming uh, the segment on the hydrogen oxygen water rocket, we were thinking, what else could we actually use to produce that um, expansive force, if you like, that pushes the water out the bottom of the bottle? And we had a few uh, little squibs, little charges of black powder made up, so we thought, why not try some black powder? 
So what we've done, we've modified our launcher here and we've got about 20 grains of black powder attached to our uh, electrodes, if you like, here. And we're going to pop these in the bottle and we're going to see if the exploding black powder will produce enough gas to actually shoot the water out the bottom of the bottle and push the bottle upwards. Now, I've never ever done this before. I'm not even sure anyone else has ever done this before. So we are pioneering. We're pushing the barriers of science. Uh, so we'll be wearing hearing protectors and a full face visor just in case and we'll be uh, approximately 20 feet away from it just in case something goes wrong. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, we're ready to go. Now, unfortunately, the black powder charge has come to rest actually against the wall of the bottle. So it might actually burn a hole through the bottle before uh, the bottle takes off. So anyway, let's give it a go, see what happens. And five, four, three, two, one. Black powder. Who'd have thought? It's actually better than hydrogen and oxygen mixed together because you don't have to faff around with all those gas cylinders and bins full of water and stuff like that. All you've got to do, a little bit of black powder, we use about 20 grains, wrapped in a paper tube, which is then wrapped in plastic insulating tape and any gap sealed with uh, a bit of hot glue. Be careful with the hot glue, obviously around black powder. Um, and then just detonate it inside the bottle and it produced plenty enough gas to actually push the water out the bottle and produce the same effect. Um, the only downside is it does smell a bit like rotten eggs because of the, the hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide that are produced when you burn this stuff. Uh, but apart from that, I think it's the perfect solution uh, for getting rid of all that noisy, messy, sweaty, pumping stuff you have to do with conventional water rockets. So there you go, a little bit of black powder will do the trick nicely.